Today in Jones County was the first day of trials for Dylan Gage Compton, who was charged with killing correctional officer Mary Ann Johnson. They wanted a way to remember all those lives that were lost over the years. That's why the architect used this special design taking the sunbeam. This is the spot where the car got swept away. And as you can see, it's not on the road anymore. Cars are still driving on by and it's gotten better, but the water is still moving pretty fast, even though that happened at 5.30 a.m. this morning. Chief Sandridge explained to us that the five officers were outside the back bedroom door negotiating with McGinnis. It's safe to say parents are shocked as something like this is playing out in an environment they never expected. This was a very different scene with police cars and people close to the victim lining the streets. If you've ever driven by here, you've seen the two planes behind me. They're stationed at Dias, the C-130 and B-1. Going into these next five weeks in runoffs, what is your strategy? That's why they made this sign and keep it up all year round to show people that they are in a shortage for bus drivers. People are still coming in. It's gotten bigger and better. There's people over here sitting in chairs, other people standing in front of the stage, and other people too stepping. You just go to abilenedips.org and you can see different prizes that you can give, different nonprofits. If you don't know who to give to, there's plenty of things for you to find out and interact with. That's going to be my biggest thing. We've been on this ride for a while. It's spinning around. There's no line, so you don't have to worry about that. Next to Gravity Edge, we're going to see. Let's see if I can climb up more. Let's see. This is not so easy, guys. I promise you that. And he would have gotten out of Abilene unnoticed if it wasn't for this meddling reporter. Rattlesnake Roundup. Yes, this is a real snake I am holding. It is not dead. This is the first time they've had this, and you say August is a big time. So, you know, how far are y'all hoping this will go? Hey, guys, we're out here at the Taylor Jones Humane Society for Next Stars Founders Day. What are all are we doing here today, Melissa? If you can see over my shoulder, walls are getting painted. And I'm going to take y'all around. Say bye to David. Bye. And I'm going to take y'all around. As you can see, let me see if I can flip the camera. There's a lot going on. They said there's more than 200 different businesses here to connect. It's going on at the Abilene Convention Center. What made you come out here and donate today? Ice cream. Ice cream? So you give my a pint, you get a pint? Uh, my son works for the fire department, so I told him I'd come up here and get blood. So did you vote for the hostess, is that correct? Of course. <laughs> how many donors they have, how many money they've raised, mm -hmm. and then how many organizations they've had. So this is the main website. It's called abilenegives.org. We're out here in Sweetwater previewing the rattlesnake roundup. We got some rattlesnakes here. And what do y'all have going on today? America is known as the land of opportunity, and three brothers from the Democratic Republic of Congo are proving that saying true right here in the key city. KRBC's Kelsey Pittman has our top story at 10. It was not an easy path for the Sebahisi brothers to get to the key city, but now that they are here, they say Abilene is a great place to live because they were able to find jobs, a low cost of living, and a lot of community support. They slaughtered us, like our friends, our uh, loved ones for two hours without fighting back. Imagine being slaughtered for two hours without fighting back. So even most of us or most of our friends were burned alive. Something the three Sebahisi brothers dealt with in their village in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm from an ethnic group called the Banyamulenge and we are very marginalized in the Congo, discriminated against. Fleeing the country in 2004 to a refugee camp in the neighboring country. People came and attacked uh, our refugee camp and killed many people. From the refugee camp to a safe haven, getting approved for a visa to come to America. Their first stop, San Diego. When I came here, I didn't speak. I was not able to speak English. Manoa, the oldest brother, was the first brother to move to Abilene. He came here because of other family members already living here. We prefer to live the big family together because we help each other. Next, the youngest brother, Fidel, then Patrick, making Abilene their permanent home. Over there, we you, you, you can't get a job, you know. There's no jobs and um, the life from there is, is difficult, you know. Each brother is raising a family here and are thankful their children will grow up in the key city. In studio, Kelsey Pittman, KRBC, Abilene's Local News. A couple's New Year's night changed into an unforgettable experience when they delivered their baby in their home unexpectedly. Good evening, I'm Kathleen Barkley. And I'm David Bacon. Thank you for joining us tonight. It was the Abilene Police Department's dispatchers, calm demeanor, and directions that guided the couple's lives to change forever. KRBC's Kelsey Pittman has tonight's top story. Abilene 911, what is the address of the emergency? 
Well, actually, my wife is going into labor, and we are doubting if we're going to have enough time uh, to get to the hospital. Three <laughs> seconds after you called 911, I called yeah. for you because at that point his head was out. And I was like, you need to come catch the baby. Logan Pringle handed the phone to his father. And just like that, a seven pound, two ounce baby boy was born. Start to finish from like her waking up to baby being in my arms was like 45 minutes. Stay on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Okay, is the, okay. Baby, yeah. is the baby crying or breathing? I was kind of in shock. And so mm -hmm. it, was really, it was really helpful to have kind of that step-by-step -step help in the what's yeah. in the next. The dispatcher staying on the phone until paramedics arrived. It's just kind of leaned against this wall here and sitting here <laughs> holding the baby and this kind of, so they came in and assessed. I mean, it's a tiny bathroom, as you can see. Now looking back okay. and listening to the 911 call. I sound really calm. I, I was told I was really calm, but in my head, all I remember was like screaming, just no, 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 not here. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> the moment, unforgettable. It all works out in the end, but yeah. it was. Listening, listening to the recording, it's like, wow, that actually, that was really quick. And it was very intense. But also, still a blur. Oh, you were in the tub? Yeah, by that I time. I didn't like, know that. I was going to go out of the way. Turning a New Year's <laughs> yeah. wish into an unexpected reality. We were not ready to have my secret dream of a home birth come true, but yeah. it did. Yeah, it did. And you survived. I did. In Abilene. Name yet? Oh, yeah, his name's Rory. Kelsey Pittman, KRBC, Abilene's local news. It's an update to a story KRBC first brought you three years ago. After nearly a decade of wondering about a missing branch to her family tree, Felicia White is getting closure. Tonight, KRBC's Kelsey Pittman sitting down with White, hearing how her missing branch is planting a new seed. You know, I finally figured it out. After so much searching and so many times staying up late at night and looking for this person. Felicia White spent seven years searching for her father. Not a day that went by while I was searching that I didn't look at somebody on the street or in the store or something and think, could that be him? Finally, after putting her tree together on an ancestry website. Unfortunately, it was obituary. That branch planting a seed to something bigger. I got to reading his obituary and found out that I had two brothers. Those brothers bring her to New Mexico to meet the rest of the family in her dad's grave. When I found him, I just kind of froze. It like time stopped for me. And I just sat there and just wish that, you know, he was there just to comfort me, but I knew it wasn't going to be possible. Building an immediate bond. It just felt right. That's what I have to go off of, and I'm excited. After my trip to New Mexico, I plan on taking more trips, and they plan on coming down here, too. In Trent, Kelsey Pittman, KRBC, Abilene's Local News. When the pizza house in Clyde closed in May of 2018. The community was upset, and ever since then, the owners got asked every day, when were they going to open back up? Well, now is that time. KRBC's Kelsey Pittman gives us a slice of what they're serving up now. Everybody knows about it. Like 7, 7.15. And it's the place. I mean, everybody loves Clyde Pizza House. The last Pizza House location was right here off I-20. The restaurant opened in 1990, but sadly, the owners made the tough decision to close in May of 2018. Now, eight months later, the community getting some exciting news. The Pizza House has a new location right here at the old fire station. And when you see these flags up, that means they're open. Flags are up. And with only one post to Facebook about the flags, the soft opening turned into more than 400 pizzas cooked. I just love seeing all the people that we didn't see. Because, you know, we got to be really close with a lot of the customers. And, um, you know, they were texting our personal phones. And messaging us and saying, when are you going to get this up? When are you going to get this up? So I'll be happy to see everybody. The customers remembering times they had here. And many more to come. I remember when they first opened in Clyde. Hey, stranger. My family just loves it. My daughter lives in Fort Worth. When they come in, that's the first stop. we got to take her and the kids to, to the pizza house. Everybody realized, I think, once they closed, how much they went and how much they enjoyed it. Making the restaurant a home away from home, whether it be with family members that owned it, like the Self Sisters dad who started the company back in 1990. He was a really special man. 
and he this was his dream and I guess we just we had to continue it. For the customers, they come in to eat it. They know you. When you walk in the door, they know what your order is. They greet you by name. They just, you know, they love you and they take care of you, and that's what makes the pizza even more special. In Clyde, Kelsey Pittman, KRBC, Abilene's Local News. Thank you, Kelsey. They chose that location in hopes to increase business in downtown Clyde.